In this video, we make a big dump load. So what is a dump load? As many of you know, we have a ludicrous amount of solar panels, and even down here in southern Mexico in December and January, we have more solar power production than we're using. Uh, and even though I spend some of that solar energy on our air compressors, uh, which power up or air up our air tanks as uh, stored energy that way, and we can run our uh, air conditioner as much as we want, we still have more solar than we're using. And as you can see in this graph, uh, the yellow line is our total solar production, and it's turning off because the, uh, the batteries are full. There's no need for excess charge, so the charge controller cuts the, cuts the solar panels and we're not charging anymore. And so I'm going to build a solar-powered water heater that will act as a dump load and give us convenient hot water all the time. So when we were planning our build, uh, we considered using our engine heat, engine coolant heat, or our SBAR D5 engine coolant heater through a valve manifold system and uh, preheat the water or heat the water through a plate exchanger or heat exchanger system. That never ended up happening. Uh, there are also some nice uh, portable marine water heaters. Whale makes one that I'm, comes to mind and Isotherm make heat exchangers that have your coolant uh, lines running through the water volume to transfer heat that way and some are also electric uh, but those get a little expensive and we never really justified the cost and now we're in Mexico and uh, so we're making do with what I got. All right, so this, as many of you might remember, is our shower keg, except it's all wrapped up in this shiny silver jacket. Uh, I did some testing with this where I took my uh, spare battery heater mat, it's a silicone heater mat you'll see here shortly, and I strapped it to the side of the stainless steel keg, wrapped it in this uh, spare Reflectix we had along, and did some testing, and uh, I can char charge, heat up our water uh, within about an hour and a half, two hours, depending how hot I want it, and so that was our proof of concept that this plan you're about to see is going to work just fine. So without uh, any delay, let me tear this apart. Uh, that, that was a lid. I made a lid to keep the top bit cool, uh, warm rather, keep the warm in and the cold out. And uh, now let's open her up and I'll show you how I built it. Okay. So here is the DS1820 uh, Dallas semiconductor temperature sensor with a headphone jack uh, connector and the silicone mat, which has sort of stuck itself to the keg. So that's it there. That gives a couple hundred watts of heat at 12 volts and uh, it's got a uh, RTC style uh, temperature sensor inbuilt, but we won't be using that. And here's my keg, back to normal again. So, just in the traveling around we've been doing in Mexico, we find a lot of these really small, cute water heaters underneath the kitchen sink or the, the washroom sink, and uh, that's a point of use water heater. They're a lot more common here than uh, in homes in uh, Canada and the US where you have a large 50 gallon water heater or so. Uh, so, I started looking into it and found this little unit. Happened to be at the Home Depot, 20% off. And uh, yeah, it's got all the right fittings we need to make a proper water heater rather than keg fittings. A drain valve, it's kind of insulated and uh, it's 120 volts. So I can run it directly off our inverter if I wanted to uh, or uh, off of a grid if I have access to that. Uh, but I'm gonna convert this and make it uh, 12 volt. Now I know how much all of our viewers like watching unboxing videos, so we're gonna make this one as quick as possible. This is it here. It's uh, wicked tiny. Super small and light. I'm really happy with the size. And it's got the uh, NPT water fittings right there already and a pressure relief valve. Now this one happens to be the uh, new and improved double, I think this one will do double or even triple the pressure of the ones in Canada and the US, which is really great because uh, if you've ever struggled with premature relief, uh, this will solve that for you. All right, so like I said, this is a very small water heater. I've never seen one so small in Canada or the US. Um, this is made by Hreem. I'm not sure even if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and although the stampings for relief valve and and hot and cold under these stickers are in English, 
Um, I can find no documentation on it in English. All the manuals and and serial number or part numbers rather are all in Spanish. So I don't know if they are available, but like I said, this will be perfect little thermal battery for our excess of solar storage. So first thing to do with a water heater like this is to test, I mean, tear it all to pieces. This is not the way in. There we go. All right, so there is the original 110 volt water heater element. This one is stamped 1440 watts. Now I am aware they do make 12 volt water heater elements like this, uh, 400, 600, and 800 watt variations, um, but I could not find one that they would ship to Mexico at this time. So I can always do this upgrade later uh, if we find we never use 110 and we want the option to heat her up faster. I can get a uh, 12 volt version of this water heater element shown here and uh, we might switch that in later but for now we're leaving it 110. That's the uh, breaker, built-in breaker and the uh, thermostat with selectable between 66 Celsius and 32 Celsius. It just interrupts the circuit. And hopefully this just slides out of here now. A little bit of rock wool, a little bit of masking tape. Just, <laughs> they've just folded it over and jammed her in. Nice. Perfect. Looks like a World War II bomb. Coincidentally, that's part of the reason I didn't like our shower keg apparatus, is it looked like some janky homemade looking thing and going through a military check stop. I'm sure I would get some raised eyebrows with that. So now all there is to do is uh, put this back together with the heater mat on it. All right, so I want to put the heater mat right here, but there's lots of welding splatter, actually very big welding splatter chunks on here. So I'm just going to take a flap disc and smooth these out. All right, so they just uh, used basking tape on the inside of this thing to put it together. So I'm gonna do the same. Just enough to hold it in there while I stuff it back in the case. And I have this janky old roll I've been dragging around from Canada twice. All right, got that on there. Just needs to hold long enough to get to uh, get the cover back on and then the ds 1820 everyone's favorite one wire sensor i'm going to put offset from that just a little bit so that it doesn't pick up the heat of the mat so much as the heat of the, the tank yep gonna stay away from that All right, got that mostly put together. Uh, like I said, this silicone mat has this uh, NTC temperature sensor built into it, but I've never used it and it's always in the way. So I'm gonna at least trim it shorter to help put this thing back together. Sweating out of my titties here. All right, so there's that part all done up. Uh, now I need to find me a place to route these wires out of the enclosure and to do that I'm gonna drill a big hole in here all right so I've got this little rubber grommet I've been carrying around for a while space that up from the bottom put the hole there many thanks to our campground friend Stefan who lent me a step drill Uh, 
that could have been the end of the table. Nice. And this little unit just pops in there. So classy. All right, now I get this whole thing back together. Must compliment the manufacturer of this fine product on their use of paint and paint accessories to put this thing together. Beauty. Like it was factory. All right, now to shoehorn this thing back in there. Whoops, this must have been the bottom. professional. Then pop on the cover. Might need a bigger hammer or more lube. We got her. Not bad. The bottom cover, which hopefully isn't keyed. Thermostat back in. I can hardly tell anyone was even in there except for this. All right, so we just had a little lunch break there, had a nice salad, and uh, now we need to cut up some copper pipe just to join these brass and copper fittings together. Need to solder this. Uh, L bracket in there just to make room, some nice clearance under there, and then thread these in. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporting channel members. I know it's been a few weeks since we've put out a video for you guys, but uh, we've been camped out here with giants of overlanding. Several big expedition trucks from Europe have rolled in, from Germany, Switzerland, and Holland. So we've had a really great time. Uh, with them, made a turkey supper for Christmas. Several of those people haven't had turkey before, so that was kind of neat to share with them. And uh, yeah, so had a really great time with them. But uh, time to get back making some videos here. So got these fittings all in. Now it's time to head in and install it. All right, so to install this water heater, the best place for us is going to be as close to the kitchen faucet as possible. That way we need to waste less water as the, uh, as the lines warm up and it gets warmer. So underneath here is going to be the best place for us. Also, it's nice and small and convenient size, so it fits in there pretty good. All right, so under our sink, we have uh, right now just soap and, and kitchen trash and that sort of stuff. And there is a false bottom in this cupboard, which holds our freezer compressor as well as the uh, S-Bar D2 heater. So just give me 10 seconds, I'm gonna pull this apart and show you guys the nitty gritty of it. So lots of room in here to work with. Let me bring you in for a closer look and we'll uh, give you the rundown of the plan. All right, so these are our water filters for our drinking water. 
Uh, Long-time viewers might remember we originally installed them under the dinette floor over here, but when we installed our lithium battery bank upgrade, uh, they moved to the side compartment door and uh, they worked fine there because they were close to the water kegs, but it was certainly far from ideal. It was a waste of space uh, just the way it was installed. And so Stefan helped me move these up in here. Uh, so this lives now behind our sink basin where our sink basin sits and utilizes this space that was previously wasted. And here uh, on where the uh, false floor is covering our freezer compressor and our SBAR-D2, uh, I've cut out a hole with the help of Stefan uh, in this false floor so that we can drop the water heater down another two inches approximately and then it'll be sitting right here on this uh, wheel well. And then I've made this uh, little bracket strap assembly. I 3D printed the cradle shape there and then installed some adhesive backed foam uh, strip and then glued this piece of webbing strap to it and then pre-drilled some holes here for the to, to line it up so that uh, it's lined up nicely and uh, now I'm ready to install it. And as you can see here I've got some 10 gauge cable which is twice as thick as the cable on the heater mat but it'll be good. Uh, soldered up to a XT60 connector and that's sitting here ready and waiting and then also a connection for the DS1820 right here. And so the little cutie water heater goes there like this. Cinch down on this strap like this. And there it is, nice and solid. I've just wound up the 110 outlet because I don't think we'll be using that for the time being. All right, and then next I need the connection for the sink. So this goes back in, screwing up Kara's shot. You can see there our fancy endless soap supply. And then next we hook up the hot side of the faucet to the outlet side of the water heater. That connection has a rubber connector. Uh, o-ring in there so it doesn't need the Teflon tape. And we just connect our very conveniently located XT60 power connector and the temperature sensor is here somewhere. Here's the connector for this. I need to tie this all the way nicely here in a bit. And of course I need to add the water, incoming water. So let's do that now. This plastic fitting here is temporary. I have a brass one on the way that's proper 3 8 so I don't want to cut this tubing because it's only here for a couple weeks. So this is uh, not permanent. But that goes to there and then I fit that to there and that to there temporarily and then Pressurizing the water keg, with any luck, it should fill with water and not leak everywhere. Alright guys, it's been a couple days since I wrapped it up, as wrapped as it's going to get anyway. Uh, as you can see up here at the top, I've got a LED light strip, which kind of lights up the interior of this cabinet nicely. I originally did that solely for this video. Uh, just temporarily, but I liked it so much that I thought I'd brighten up a typically dingy spot, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the water filters are tucked up here behind the sink basin, uh, utilizing that previously wasted space. Uh, the ballast for our UV sterilizer, which you can see here, it puts out a kind of a weird eerie glow through the fittings, as you can see. And then the star of the show, the water heater socketed into this uh, subfloor here that hides our uh, fridge freezer compressor as well as our SBAR-D2 heater. You can see the vent for it here. I did check uh, with a the thermal gun the outside 
doesn't get too much hotter than ambient, thankfully, except for the copper fittings are a few degrees warmer on the top, the copper and the uh, blow-off valve. So I'm going to insulate those here in a little bit. That's it for here for now. Now let's check out the control system and how I'm controlling this using our excess solar. All right, so in our uh, electrical control bay now, these are our uh, P-channel driver boards that I built in another video. I showed you how to do that. You can click in this card up here to see that. Or as they've been come to known in the campground, Todd boards. And there's not much to this, just the uh, wire. This is the 10 gauge cable coming from the water heater. That comes up into our high current driver board where it is controlled by this Raspberry Pi, which is monitoring the DS1820's uh, temperature. And when the criteria are correct, it flips on this high current driver, heating the water. So let's jump up into the computer now and I'll show you that. All right, next of course is the control system, control loop that uh, monitors the temperature and diverts our excess solar to the water heater element. Uh, so this is very early in this uh, script development. Uh, I will be posting updates to this to our website everlanders.com as uh, things develop, but uh, I'll just give you a quick overview and then uh, we'll, we'll just give you a quick tour. So, uh, so this is the script, uh, and I'm going to really skim over it quickly here. Uh, these first parts import external libraries, boring. Uh, this is the stuff. Uh, it sets the uh, warnings to false. Water heater is on pin one, which I'm using the BCM pin numberings, which converts to uh, pin D3 on my heavy duty driver board, uh, and sets it to an output. Uh, then I declare the low voltage cutoff at 80% of our, our system voltage. Uh, the set point is passed in as a variable. The set point is basically the temperature that the water heater is shooting to maintain. And the device file is simply the DS1820's uh, path where it stores the temperature for that particular unit. These two parts here, whoops, these two parts here are uh, functions that call that uh, file and convert all the gurgle gigook into English, metric English in Celsius. And then this is the main logic right here. Uh, if the state of charge is greater than the low voltage cutoff, then uh, read the temperature. And if the temperature is less than the set point, i.e. if the temperature in the tank is less than what I've set it to, which is 60, then print, turn the heater on, and turn the output for the water heater on. Else, if the uh, temperature is less, or rather greater than the set point, if it's as hot as it needs to be, turn the heater off. Really, really basic. And then this block down here is basically if this top block is not true. So if the state of charge is less than the low voltage cutoff, then the batteries are too low, below the 80% uh, threshold, and declare batteries are too low, switch the heater off, and uh, print out the temperature for fun. Okay, so uh, then let me just show you how these are being called. Uh, let's jump in here again. They're being called by the cron tab, very basically. So it's the second line here. Uh, it runs every minute and checks if the temperature is below the set point and if the battery level is above the safe threshold, and if so, turns it on and sets the target temperature to 60 degrees. So I just come in here and change this as I need to to make whatever adjustments I need. And then I have this first script running as a failsafe. Force water heater off. And that runs every 30 minutes. And the reason for that is uh, if the one wire bus crashes or if one of the sensors fails, it takes down the whole bus. So all 10 of my sensors would go offline if any one failed. And if the water heater happened to be on during that time, it would uh, go into a thermal runaway and stay on until the pressure relief valve relieved. So don't want that to happen. So every 30 minutes it turns off. It only climbs you know 20 degrees in 30 minutes so okay guys the last thing i wanted to show you was the water heater temperature graph as shown in blink so i'll put that on screen now uh, 
Unfortunately, I did unplug a sensor and then plug it back in, which has caused this uh, this missing data here and then this erroneous spike to 85 Celsius. But as you can see, uh, overnight, this is 4 a.m., the temperature in the tank goes down because I have it switched off. And once we hit 8 o'clock here, the temperature starts going up. You can see in the top right there, 59 degrees. And then, uh, even though it's maintained the temperature all day today, and I have the set point set to 60, and so it just toggles between 59.5 and 60 degrees Celsius. And uh, through the course of the day, you can see the green line above that. That's our battery state of charge, and we're still uh, fully charged today. And then there's two other little things I wanted to point out here. These two dips right here. These are uh, where I washed some dishes at 127 and 153. I took a bunch of water out to start a sous vide cook. So I started with preheated pre water just to, to save, the, save the energy from the sous vide running directly off the solar. And so, uh, but the point I wanted to show is now you can see the water temperature recovering from 58 to 60 in pretty short order. So we've been having this uh, running in some state or another for the last week or so and it's been really nice to have on-demand hot water with power that would have gone to waste. So alright guys that's gonna be it for this one. Hope you guys found it interesting. I do have a new idea and that is to have you guys vote on what you want to see next. Uh, since this video will be going to our channel members uh, a week or so before everyone else, it will be weighted towards what the members want to see, but I will uh, consider non-members' votes and, and opinions if there's a landslide that way. Uh, so here are the list of things that I'm working towards uh, making videos on. Let's see what you guys think. Number one is build a 3D printer into the truck and convert it to run directly off of solar. And that way I'll be able to make some parts and help people along the way. I've already actually got the printer here, uh, but I need to do a bunch of modifications to modify it to suit our needs. Uh, but it has been, it's proven invaluable already, uh, making all sorts of brackets and, and uh, fittings for other people on their rigs. So that's something I'm working on. Uh, the next item is a Max Fan Retrofit Repair extravaganza. Uh, I know the Max Fan Deluxe is one of the more popular fans out there. We see them every day and every day we hear about people's complaints of the uh, motors being squeaky or problems with the circuit design where it uh, will shut off at 14 volts which is everybody's lithium battery bank and uh, and the brush is wearing out. In fact, this fan above my head here, uh, after about two and a half years, we've worn clean through the copper commutators in the motor. And so I'm going to try and field repair that on the side of the road here. So that's another option. Uh, LoRa communicators is the next. These are LoRa ESP32 boards. Come on, you focus. They're about 25 or 30 bucks. Comes with a battery connector, uh, ESP32, a LoRa long range radio, and a GPS receiver, and a little screen. And uh, I've got a handful of these, and I want to uh, make a little mesh network among travelers, and we can send messages to each other when we're in areas of off gridedness. Here's one that I whipped up that uses. Uh, a 3D printed case. Come on, you. She ain't gonna happen. It's a surprise. The next thing is DC to DC conversion. Uh, so many of the products we use at home are uh, 110 voltage plug-in items, and then there's a power brick and it converts it to something else. Uh, this laptop, for example, uh, has a 300 watt 19 volt power adapter and our Dyson vacuum is also 19 volts but much smaller current and so on and the 3D printer also uh, 24 volts so we'll see if uh, converting from 
just DC to DC gains us much efficiency over DC to AC to DC to different DC. So there's always going to be some losses in the conversion. So that's uh, something that's interested me for a while. So I'm going to give that a go. So let me know what you think. I'll see if I can put a poll link up in the top corner there. Check that out or uh, failing that, just leave your comments down below what you think you want to see. Let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, I know some of my projects are a little bit fringe and may not appeal to the masses, but uh, hopefully you found it at least entertaining. All right, so thank you all for watching, especially our supporting channel members. If you guys are interested in watching these videos without advertisements and a week or so early, check out the join button down below. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.